how is everyone? I just wanted to make this video to show what I've been doing in Houdini and maybe go through a few tips and tricks and some stuff uh, that might be in, of interest. Um, so uh, let me just open the latest scene that I've been working on. This is um, actually... Um, let me just go and open maybe this uh, one here. So I've been trying with Vellum, uh, and while trying with Vellum, I've been learning a lot of other stuff. And I think that's one thing that might be interesting for people that want to learn any software. Uh, is just go in um, through, you know, the door that you can, you know, open with less resistance. And from there, you explore what's around it. You know, so uh, if if you you know you do uh, vellum and you want to do like some cloth hanging on a rope, you will need to understand what groups are, uh, so you can pick the points that you want to uh, pin or attach. So you you you, you learn groups, and and um, you know if you want to do some hair, you you end up learning some stuff about curves and and um, some some nodes that are important when you are dealing with curves. So I guess you know if you if you go through the path of less resistance at the beginning, you 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 end up um, you know learning other stuff naturally. Um, one thing that I've not done yet is to jump into client work, uh, you know, with Udini. I, I haven't told any clients that I oh I, I know Udini because I, I don't know. Uh, that's one thing that I'm you know being very careful because you know I I know. Uh, enough to play with it but I don't know enough to do client work and then the director wants me to change uh, some particular thing that I can't change because I don't know how to so I, I've been actually on, on that Adobe Max um, I use it a tiny bit just for some simulations but because we had loads of freedom to explore uh, you know uh, that made it easier because this, I knew that the director would not, or the art director would not come in and say, oh, Mario, can you just, you know, change that little thing there instead of, you know, inflating this way, can you make it inflated that way or something? So, uh, and, and he knew that I was just using Houdini because I was just trying out. So he would never ask, ask me uh, that kind of stuff. So you need to be careful there. Um, so I actually opened a uh, very uh, old scene, I think. Um, so this is, you know, my scenes and my exploration process are very messy, honestly. You know, I try out stuff and I have like stuff on the side and, you know, and, and, and then I go through it and I organize it. So this one was uh, actually already kind of organized, but I still have some stuff here. So let me open the, the previous one. So because I can notice that I started doing something on the side already here. So and this is, I'm using OD Tools, by the way. This is OD Tools um, Project Selector, which is really cool. Uh, if you are interested, I can make a small tutorial about it. Um, right, so let's see uh, which scene do I want here. So I went 15, so I think it's actually 14. Uh, let's see. So I've been doing, uh, yeah, that's this is the one. I've been playing with uh, a cloth and, uh, you know, stitching different pieces of cloth and, uh, you know, simulating different parts of the cloth. Um, and, um, you know, in this case, you know, I've, I have this main body and then I have those ribbons hanging. I've posted this on, on YouTube actually, and on my Instagram and TikTok. So you, you just, you can check it out and LinkedIn also. Um, um let me just shrink this here a bit. Right. So what have I done here? Um, I'm just going to go and kind of run you guys through it in a very simplistic way. So this uh, I've selected, uh, I've not selected, I've created the body. Uh, I call it the body, right? So let me just go to the first frame. Um, so I just 
from a sphere I added a deformer uh, I actually want to try something like this in in cinema just to see if this actually works now with with their new tools uh, I remeshed it and then I've scattered uh, actually what I wanted to do here is to slice it see so what I want to do here is to slice this in different bits and then select this edges and uh, kind of uh, pinch them together to make the, the stitches right so kind of to to um, to stitch all of these parts together and make sure that we get that uh, um, this effect here when we simulate right right so uh, the way I've done this I just uh, added uh, a Voronoi fracture here uh, I scattered some points on it uh, on this mesh I scattered a few points okay and and exactly like in cinema you can do this with Voronoi so in cinema you, you input some points and it creates the Voronoi fracture Uh, and you can you can see the the, the cuts here you know uh, so it created a few pieces and then uh, what I wanted to do he to do here is to um, remove uh, so the, the idea here is to remove the shared edges is like uh, because uh, if I go down, let me just try to see uh, a few things I still don't understand 100%. Uh, so uh, excuse my uh, weird explanation sometimes. Um, I'm going to try and do my best here. Um, basically, you know, I sliced it. I want I wanted to slice, let me see here, this in, in tiny bits or in, in pieces. And actually cut the geometry you know like uh, the, the, this point see so if I if I grab one point here uh, and pull the point they, they, they are not connected actually um, and this is what this does so uh, I just do like a Voronoi fracture and then uh, this uh, edge fracture needs uh, uh, we can fit a curve into it right so yeah let's let's go back uh, a bit let's go back a bit here um, I'm just gonna you know um, turn off those this edge fracture can actually be used like this so I can actually say I want to cut this in a few pieces and it creates this shape behind you know or this simplified shape that will cut the the object uh, where the the line is right so if I just go here that that's what's happening right so you can see let me see if i can no well anyway so you can see that it created this shape but i want my own shape i want to create my own curves and i think these are curves i'm not sure I, or maybe that this is actually a solid you know like a low res solid uh i can actually hide the geometry the guy geometry here but i want my own curves and that's because i don't like the shape Right, I don't like this. This is more like I don't know, glass, shattered glass. The pieces are too big. I want the pieces to be more like the Voronoi pieces. Uh, so I, I thought like, okay, so let's. I need curves. I need to create some curves uh, because if I just come here and uh, let's see, if I create a curve. And connected to the edge fracture uh, I want to turn off the initial pieces I don't want that I want the curve um, if I just do this and I think this is the first time I'm using this curve uh, let's see maybe actually let, let's try a circle Mm 
Okay, see? The circle is there and it created a curve. It, it you know, see it's it generated a cut in here. You know, you can see it there, right? And there on that side. So if I rotate it transform mm. if I rotate this guy you can see that I created two pieces right you can see there so I wanted to create some curves with the shape of the Voronoi similar um, to get my my object right so that's what I tried to do and I actually looked up for this I, I didn't come up with this alone you know I've been looking online how to do this and I don't know where I, I got this uh, but uh, so basically this uh, I, I create this Voronoi uh, node um, I don't know what I've changed here, but I think uh, yeah, I, I changed like create interior pieces. So I don't I don't want interior pieces. I on, only want like a shell. Uh, and then this remove shared edges and just creates uh, just deletes all the edges that are. Um, you know, let me see here. It creates this piece attribute, um, and then this remove shared edges creates a curve. Um, oh, actually, it doesn't. So it just removes the edges that are shared, like you know, like see, like the, this disappear, this disappears. So there's no, um, I guess, points sharing the same edges or something like that. And then uh, in here, I just got this vex script uh, that simplifies the, the the shape even more because it kind of deletes the points that are on top of each other I guess uh, but I don't need that I can actually do this and then this convert to line just converts those edges to lines so I think the problem here is that I, I will have points that are uh, overlapping see like kind of I think this yeah some points might be overlapping here so this yeah this cleans that no, so just create simplified objects that will or lines that will then cut this edge fracture the way I want it okay and uh, this uh, this edge fracture also creates a piece attribute like this I, I don't really need this piece attribute honestly um, right all good yep yeah. So it creates this piece attribute here, like a primitive piece output. And then I connect this to the color, um, or I actually fit this into the color to create this uh, random colors here, just, just for, for me to, to see what's happening. Uh, so I have my shape uh, cut it in two pieces. Um, and it's actually cut it out because the edge fracture just unwells the points. I don't think the fracture, the, the Voronoi does that. Maybe it does, maybe it does it. Yeah, it makes sense that it does, but I actually don't want the shape of the Voronoi. I want the shape that the edge fracture creates. Ah, I, okay, that's it. What the, what the edge fracture does actually is that based on those curves, it cuts the geometry. Uh, it doesn't cut polygons in half like the Voronoi does. Like the Voronoi lines are created like, they, they just go across the polygons and it would create one point here, another point there, and just cut this polygon in two pieces, right? This one doesn't. The edge fracture actually goes around, uses those curves and goes around and actually cut, doesn't cut the polygons, just separates the points in the edges, see? Which is exactly what I want. I don't want like it to cut the polygons. Right, so, uh, and the reason is because I want to pinch this, you know, correctly. I don't want that, like half polygons that are very small, and, and at least here they are all basically the same size. Uh, and I want like this kind of edges that are, uh, how do you say, uh, not straight. You know, they have like a, 
they wiggle, right? Or how do you say? I'm missing the, the word in English. Uh, so then here, um, I actually, uh, you know, cre uh, create a group of the boundary edges. Um, and this is like a group from attribute boundary. And the attribute is the piece attribute, which uh, it's one piece attribute per object. Uh, and then uh, it cre it's, creates a group called stitches. Uh, and that group has all the edges, you know, that are around each um, island, let's say. Uh, so then I create another group, uh, a group expand that expands those that selection out a bit because I will also want to pick up this um, edges here. So what I want to do is I want to weld at some point this middle edge again. I want them to be welded. And I want to use these ones that I um, expanded to make the stitches. So I want to shrink them when it's simulating. So it creates that, that pinch. So that's, that's it. Okay. Then um, I, I'm going to, I'm planning to do actually a tutorial on this while I actually create one of these objects. But um, for now, I'm just going to go through it and, um, and talk about it a bit. Right. So I just have a, a, a null here. Uh, so these are, I called it slices. Um, it actually, I call it bubbles, I think, in a, in a group. I create a group called uh, bubble group. You know, so uh, this is the same as this being connected here. This is like a, just importing this null. Um, right. Let me just uh, move to my welcome because sometimes the mouse you know, my hand hurts so I'm, I'm i'm very old already um right so okay so now here i do the simulation i do the volume simulation it, it looks complex it, it's not that complex kind of sometimes you know a bit weird but uh actually you know i should have a udini pen um right so i create a group just to have this group of points because i will need it at some point you know i will need it here to say which cloth will affect what group um right so i just create the the vellum cloth that uh oh yeah i have i have um three types of three cloth constraints here with different settings uh, and the reason is because I want parts of this to have different uh, cloth types. Uh, I want this part to be softer, this one to be stiffer, uh, and I, because I think it creates like a nice variety. So the way I do this is through the piece uh, attribute. So if I show the piece attribute here, uh, or here, it's fine. Let's just... So if I show the piece attribute, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, I think I, I only need to go to this information and then... No, um, I can create... What's this? Yeah, this marker, let's see. Okay, this is the one, da, 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 piece text, it should be showing. Uh, element index ah okay i have a setting that just just to show it under my cursor uh, which is under pointer see i'm gonna put always visible text always visible font size large Yeah, so I'm going to do like under pointer. Okay, so. Uh, so this is two. Um, near pointer. Okay, let's do it like this. You can see that this is uh, piece number two. This is piece number nine. Right. This is piece number zero. And that's it. You know, it, it keeps going, you know, like piece number six so each piece has a number and I can select those 
here you know it comes through this uh, chain right so I can say okay though so this cloth constraints only apply to piece one piece two and piece three so if you see like the constraints are only uh, on those and then here you know this is only on that one and this one is on on the rest of them you know so i actually say okay so apply this to all of them but this but this but this and but this you know the exclamation point here it says like don't apply to this ones and apply to all the other ones um because these ones are already used in here then uh i just go and create a pressure constraint also on the bubbles only on the bubbles group which is this and uh, I, I, I like to do it like this because I might have some some other group um, in here and actually I should have uh, I should have created um, probably I should say okay don't apply to this points here uh, so I would need to create you know because I have uh, I've created this groups here and I could just promote this to points and say yeah don't apply the the pressure to this uh so they actually get pinched and don't get any pressure i don't know if that would make any difference but maybe it would uh right this is very strange oh it's the other side okay right so where were we okay so i'm applying some pressure and then what i'm doing here with the distance um it's the the distance along edges i'm grabbing those seams these guys right and actually make them making them shorter you know, the rest length the default one usually is one and i'm you know shorten them so shortening them uh, so they just pull against each other you know like it kind of get smaller and then i make sure i weld um uh, here this is not correct it shouldn't be the bubble group but yeah it's fine i can put bubble group but the welding should be uh this the the seam so it should be edges and it should be seam um seams yeah it should be seams okay only that line there uh, but i i guess if i put bubbles you know the weld will actually look for points that are disconnected and connect them so um and then uh, i have a pin constraint um why oh because I'm actually you know it's the pin to target so i'm actually trying to keep this object uh when i'm simulating i will make sure that the object will be you know in the same place kind of so i'm pinning it to the place where the object is but still uh, create some simulation on it right so it will stay there you know i don't have gravity anyway but if i don't do this the pressure the pressure will just fill up those bubbles there and the object will start moving around uh, i don't want that i want it to stay kind of static almost like a um you know a drag force but it kind of pins it into place into its like the place where it is because it's soft i can actually change the stiffness so it kind of it doesn't stay exactly where it is you know it kind of floats a tiny bit and lets the cloth do its work and then i use a vellum drape which is also a solver it kind of solves it with a very very high damping uh, you know property or, or you know it solves it like very slowly and the time is slow so if if i create a a drape here um if 
we go to forces. Okay, there's a air drag to one, which is kind of normal, but the time scale is 0 0.2. So everything is happens very slow. So if you are, you know, creating some a skirt for a character, and if you play it, it will just go slowly down and and you know stay there on a, on a, almost like a default position, um, and then you can simulate from there. And what this has, it's a. Uh, um, let me just bring it back. You can actually you you play the timeline and then you freeze the frame that you want and it keeps it in memory. Uh, but you can actually save that frame to disk and then load from disk, which is what I'm I'm doing here. You know, I'm loading that. So it kind of you know um, simulates it, fills up fills it up with air and then stays there and then you can freeze the frame and then you have your frame where you're gonna start working again and doing all the stuff to it right so in this case what I've done is uh, I've created a, 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 a deformer like a, a like a normal mountain deformer uh, and it's actually rotating um, because I have a turntable effect thing anyway you know I created this uh, so see I have a turntable so you can actually create a turntable turntable it's there yeah but that's it I'm gonna leave it so it deforms those points and then here again I did like something that that I had to learn how to do uh, you know what's kind of I actually learned this on Paul's uh, Paul Steves um, Houdini school tutorial that I bought recently, the the, the art directing cloth. Uh, I will leave the the link uh, down on the description. Uh, so I've applied a noise, and then I'm copying, and then I've applied uh, a pin. Again, why did I apply a pin again? Pin to target again. Oh yeah, because you know, yeah, this is where things start to get strange. Sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, one hundred percent. But you know, after this vellum drape, you know, the constraints that still come. You know, the constraints that I created here, the vellum values on the constraints still come through this uh, so I've created a pin here again just to keep it in place again I guess and then I def I'm, I'm actually deforming the, the object and then I'm copying those deformed points after this pin uh, so the pin is not getting every deformed point um, and then I can simulate this and you know it simulates with that deformation right it's taking the deformation into account and creating those folds and everything you know it's still simulating after the deformation um, because I'm bringing that deformation into here from this uh, mountain deformer right so and uh, let me just uh, oops okay so I'm bringing that deformation in copying those points into the position that it's going to come in here not sure why I have this pin to target again I don't need this probably let me just see what happens when I simulate like this so the constraints are not coming in now oh yeah so see it's like a normal object just falling with the gravity I have here do I have gravity yeah and you know the reason is because all these constraints so this will is not like a it caches, yeah, basically it does what the Vellum IO does, you know, you, it caches both the object and the constraints. 
So it just like all of this, all of these settings, you know, that I have here before I froze that frame will still come in and it's still a cloth object. Um, I'm not sure about this. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to bypass this guy. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I don't need that pin because I have a pin to target already there. That's it. Perfect. Okay. So I'm actually adding a deformation, right? Uh, every frame because the mountain kind of calculates it every frame so every frame it's fitting in the, uh, one thing that i don't understand is that for to do this every frame and to, to put it inside of the volume solver for some things it doesn't work you know I, I need to do it inside the simulation but in this case this deformer is working outside of the simulation so if i had a mask and if i want the mask to you know the noise of the mask to do something to this geometry i would need to do that create the mask outside and then go inside and make sure that that value is is being calculated you know every frame somehow inside of the simulator but the mountain node i don't need to do that so yeah well Houdini is strange. I'm sure I will understand this at some point. Okay, so now I'm simulating this mountain deformer taking the cloth into account, or simulating the cloth taking the deformer into account. Yeah. And then I cached it. Okay. So I have this cached, and I have a null making it, you know, go out. So then I just want one frame of this. Uh, I want to have the option to have just one frame of this. So this is just frame one. Um, and forget about the rotating thing. And then this frame goes into the ribbons I'm creating. So I'm just creating a few ribbons here. You know, just scattering some points and copying uh, some ribbons to the points. And then I'm deleting a few attributes here that I don't need, like the, this ID was getting some, I was getting into trouble with it. And then I have a group for those fetish, it's, it's ribbons in Portuguese, like this, fetish. And then I have the fetish group. And then I also use this frame here too, um, okay, so then I use the fetus group up here, and then I want to simulate the fetus group, but use but colliding with this frame. So I'm going to do like a vellum drape again. So again, fetus will be attached, and uh, you know they will will be attached to this. You know, if I just come here, so I'm just attaching to the object that is coming in here into the collision object, which is, you know, the this body. And then, it, and it will collide with it also. And then I will make the fetish uh, be um, a cloth. And then I drape it. Okay. And then when I drape it, I'm loading this. Okay. This is showing me something How do I refresh this? This is an old project that I don't know why I have this here. Oh, maybe, uh, I guess, you know, what I did here is like, I think I had a vellum. See, the, the names are, I still have to deal with all of this because I, I have, this is another object that I'm playing with. And I had this on the same project. And I also had a vellum drape too on the same project. So what happened is that when I cached it, it cached that name. And cache that one instead of this one. So now I would need to go and cache this. 
Uh, so I still, do I need to rename all of this? Or I, I can't work on the same project with, I don't know. Uh, I guess what I need to do is uh, to do something like this. Rebound the fetish. And now um, I will unload this. So I don't need to load it. And it's just calculating one frame. Actually, it's trying to calculate this. So, so now I need to do a drape uh, 109 frames. So, and then also, I don't want this to rotate. So I'm going to disconnect this. All right, so let's drape this. Uh, I'm going to pause this and come back when it's done. Right, so it simulated... Uh, I actually, you know, I, I, I kept doing the talking without uh, and pausing it. So it actually simulated 170 something frames. So what happened is that the, the ribbons kind of fell down and collided with this guy. Um, this guy is like a, a frozen frame that comes from here. So the, the, the ribbons just fell, collided with it, stayed there static, and I uh, saved a frame to disk and then uh, checked load frame and reload geometry and now I have this frame right just one frame so then uh, I cleaned all the attributes but color and pin I don't think pin I need to pin is not an attribute this uh, a group I don't know why I have it here so I've deleted all the attributes that come from this from those constraints right because I want to simulate again. I want to actually do, see, like there's all, all of these ones um, created by these constraints, like the, the cloth and the attach. Uh, but I don't want that. Uh, I cleaned all of them because I want to do it all over again and a, a new attach and a new cloth. But this time it's bringing in the balloon animation, right? That it's cached here. It comes from here. So now, Attach, so I make sure that, oh, oops, I make sure that this uh, group pin uh, that it's that I created when I created uh, the ribbons, uh, which is somewhere I don't know, sorry, the ribbons. I see this is confused sometimes. Uh, okay, yeah, that's the ribbon. So, so it created those ribbons and then uh, there's a pin here, you know, the, the first or just the, you know, the one, the main ribbon has a group at the bottom uh, that I created with this expression that grabs, you know, the two last rows of points. Uh, and this group is called pin. So coming back here, you know, I've attached using the pin group, right, to the bubble group, which is this group, right? So they are here, you know, attached. And then um, I created cloth again, just, you know, the ribbons are made of cloth. So I just create like a normal cloth and then I solved it. And when I solve it, you know, I'm just going to make sure we can see this. I play. Okay. Something is wrong. Let's see. Oops. Yep. Okay. 
so it's simulating it's a bit slower because you know there's a lot of geometry here so they are all attached or you know glued actually they are attached to the geometry that it's cached already right um and i've cached it here so only the ribbons uh, and then i just bring the balloons and merge them with the ribbons here i do a few things just to make sure i could uh, add shading to them so this is just a you know i made sure that we had uh, with this connectivity we had uh, the class attribute per ribbon right because it creates a class attribute per ribbon and then uh, I've renamed that to features uh, and then I applied a shader and this shader uh, will actually there's a baby crying in my house uh, it's actually my granddaughter believe it or not it's six months old. I don't know if you can hear. Um, so uh, I have a shader here that actually brings in that fetish. Um, in this case, this is the wrong one. I should re rename stuff, right? So it brings in the attribute fetish that I created with this connectivity. And then uh, it, you know, uh, gets that attribute there's like a fit range here i will i will show this in in a tutorial in my page patreon uh, with more detail but basically it, it's bringing the fetish to give it a uh, uh, different color based on this ramp and the same with the body here i'm promoting some attributes here but anyway so this is uh basically you know the the structure of the, of this project and um I'm, I'm trying to go and and you know create more difficult project so I can learn um, and I find out that sometimes the logic behind you know simulating all object different objects together and all that uh, kind of weird I'm still getting my head around it uh, but yeah I, I hope you liked uh, this is just an overview of uh, of this project that I've been working on so uh, I will be creating a proper tutorial on this uh, for my patreon hopefully very soon.